and today we are going to be making a three-dimensional fall harvest truck for a first birthday party. Um, so first thing I want to go through is just what you'll need to recreate this cake or something similar. So I have three about one to one and a half inch layers baked of cake that I baked in a quarter sheet size pan with walls. Um, so the pan is about 12 by eight. So something roughly about this size. And then two one to one and a half inch layers baked in a loaf or bread pan. If you don't have these size pans, you could use any pan that you have and just trim them down to about these sizes. So I'm gonna put the cakes aside for just a second. And so let's go over everything else that we will need. We're going to need a nice sturdy turntable with a good spin, a serrated knife, a small offset spatula, a regular spatula, something to smooth your cake with. I like to use a bowl scraper with a flat side. You could use um, just your spatula to smooth or any other tool that you like. Uh, then you're going to need your icing. So I have uh, a brown sugar Swiss meringue to complement the flavor of the cake, which is a caramelized pear brown sugar cake. Uh, a bit of simple syrup if you like to use that. And then also anything else you're going to be filling the cake with. So I have some homemade cinnamon pecan crunch that's going to go in between the layers as well. You're going to need your cake board. I would recommend a cake drum. If you don't have a drum, you can use cake cards glued together. So I have three, um, these are not cardboard, they're like a plastic, but so I've taped three of them together to make it thicker. And then once the cake is done, we'll finish the edge with ribbon so that it looks presentable. But the reason you want it to be thick is because the cake's gonna be somewhat heavy. So when you put something with weight on the board, it should, it should be able to hold up without too much billowing in the middle. That'll cause your cake to crack. So make sure it's nice and sturdy. You're also going to need any inspiration pictures that you have. You can use um, a cake reference that you found on Pinterest or the internet. So I have this cake picture. Um, it's exactly the style I was, I'm going for. So I printed that out just so I can refer back to it from time again. And also what I like to do is pre-make some stencils. This is a really helpful tool whenever you're doing any kind of three-dimensional cake. So I do one stencil for the um, above view of the cake and then one for the forward facing view. So I just used my half sheet parchment and cut it in half so that it's about the size. So it's about the size of the pan. So this is a little bit smaller than the pan because I folded it to make it smaller because I want to have some trim from the side of the cake to add to the front because I want it to be a little bit longer. So I folded this piece in to make it about 12 by 7. So I have that extra inch. And what I did was just roughly sketched where the, the roof of the car would be. So I have the bed of the truck here the roof of the truck here, and then this will be the front of the truck plus the portion I will add. And then I have the side view. So I have the front of the truck, the roof of the truck, and the back of the truck. And just roughly sketched where proportionately the doors and the tires should be. So I can hold this up to the cake when I'm decorating it or carving it and have a rough idea of where things are going to be. If you want an exact stencil, you can also try doing a Google search. A lot of people make these things and upload them uh, so you can print it to scale for your cake. Um, when you're making like a sneaker cake or maybe like a specific model car, like a Ferrari, things that people have done before, you can usually search for those. Um, even on Etsy, sometimes people will make them and then they'll put them for sale on Etsy and you buy the image and then print it yourself at home. So that those are really great tools to have. 
Okay, so that's all of our mise en place. So let's get started on trimming the cakes. We're baked yesterday, wrapped, and chilled overnight. It's very important to have cool cakes when carving. It helps them stay together during the carving process. I'm not going to put any frosting down on the board in between the cake because um, this is a brown sugar caramel cake so it's very tacky. It's going to stick right to the board better than if I had put down any frosting. Um, so I want this side to be down so I'm going to flip it using the plastic to help support. Um, and I'm just going to decide if I want the cake to be off kilter but I think I'm going to do it straight on the board. Okay, so just flipping. And the reason why I'm doing this side down is because um, the bottom of what was baked in my pan has all the caramel and the pears, so I want that to be kind of where the filling is. Okay, so just removing my plastic. I also like to have a bowl to put the trash in so I'm not walking back and forth to the garbage can. And I also have a bowl with a zip top bag that I keep by when I'm trimming the cakes where I can put any cake scraps and then I can save these in the freezer for making cake pops or um, cake in jars, anything where I might just need some extra little cake scraps. I'm probably not going to have much scrap here because I am reserving the one portion that I'm trimming off for the front end of the cake to make it a little longer. And now I'm just positioning my cake where I think it's going to end up being center once I've done the trimming. Using a piece of parchment paper on top of the cake, I'm going to place the next cake on top. This is just to keep them from sticking together since I'm not using the cake cards in between because I'm going to trim them all at once, then take them away and fill. I'm even going to leave this one slightly wrapped so it's easier to take away. Just line them up.
Okay, just give you a quick twirl, make sure all the sides are even, the cakes are lined up so that they're all trimmed good. Okay, if you have a ruler, you can use it. I'm just gonna save myself the time of getting one out and just use my drying rack for a straight edge. And I'm going to use my serrated knife to cut off this portion. Try my best to keep it intact because I wanna bring that portion around to the front to extend the truck a little bit. Okay, so I've cut about halfway through. I'm gonna turn around so I have better control and cut from this way. I've already marked it where I need to cut, so I'll remove this. And just continuing while holding my cake to try and prevent it from snapping. And if you're not using a sticky brown sugar cake, you probably won't need to keep the plastic or the parchment paper in between the layers. It's just going to be helpful for me because this is a very sticky cake. Okay, um, with another piece of parchment. Just gonna plop these over and set them down. When doing a 3D cake, it's also a good idea to keep any of the little scraps and things um, somewhere sanitary because if a piece of the cake breaks off or you need to fill in a little bit more space than you thought you would, you can make like a cake pop mix with the scraps and a little icing and shape that back onto the cake. All right, so I'm going to take these layers off now and start building up. And then when we get the bottom portion of the truck ready, we will start to work on the top. You don't have to worry too much about cleaning up the board in between, but less clutter for me is better. I like a clean working area. Okay, so for the frosting and filling, I am using an Ateco 806 round tip. And I think this is a maybe a 12 or 14 inch bag you can use whatever you want if you don't want to use a tip you can just cut a hole in the bag but i i really think that the tips help when frosting the cake because they give you an even amount of frosting so it's less smoothing and scraping away
I'm just going to go in with the frosting. I'm not applying simple syrup to this part of my cake because all the caramel and pears are keeping it nice and gooey. When I continue on with the layers, I might put some on the back side of the cakes. But I, I really don't think this cake needs it, so I might not. So I have a nice even coat of my frosting. Um, just going to use my spatula to get it all flat and even. I'm not even taking any off because I use the tip, so I'm just really smearing. Right, and now I'm going to add a little bit of my crumble crunch. Ooh, if I could get it open. Okay. And now I'm going to go with the next layer of frosting. Just going to apply a little bit extra where the cake has cracked. And fill that in first. So I make sure it gets all down in there. When I put it in the fridge, it'll harden into place. Okay, I want to add on those front pieces, so I'm just going to make sure there's icing here in the front end. Not too much, I don't want them it getting soft and then falling off, so just enough to glue them. I'm going to try to avoid using a lot of icing here, so I'm going to just put icing under the top piece. And we can reserve this in our scrap bowl. Good. 
going to just clean up the board. And before we go ahead and put the crumb coat of icing, I want to attach the top of the truck. I'm going to remove the portion that's hanging over. And I'm also going to take about three quarters of an inch off here because I think it's a little bigger than I want it. Okay, I think that's great. Just enough frosting to adhere the other cake. All the crumbs in, like the name says. So for this, I just plop frosting in spots and Smooth it. All right, now I'm going to pop this in the fridge for at least two hours, more time if you have it. Get everything nice and firm before we put our frosting. And then it will require less time in between the fonditing, the more time it has to chill during this portion. So I'll see you in a few. Refrigerator for about two hours and the icing is firm to the touch. So now at this point, what I'm going to do is just take a closer look at the cake and see if um, while the cake has settled, if anything shifted, if there's anything I want to trim away. Uh, so I noticed here this is bulging a little bit. It's not perfectly straight, so I'm going to cut that away. It's just going to give me an easier time when icing the cake, not having to worry about um, compensating for that bulge. The back end is also a little slanted, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that also. Putting a little bit of icing from where I cut away to seal it in. The cake is cold so it will harden right away. I want to apply even pressure all the way around while icing the cake. I'm actually just going to clean up the cake board again even though I did it already. Now that I've trimmed, I want to make sure none of the crumbs are going to get back into the cake. This cake will be covered in fondant, so if crumbs do get into the icing, it's not a big deal for appearance purposes, but it's always a good practice to have a clean work area before you start. So 
So just applying the icing evenly. use the mini offset spatula but you could use whatever you prefer and I'm just going around with this I'm not using this to remove the icing just filling in any gaps and getting it um, spread together when doing a square or a rectangle or something with an edge you always want to smooth over the edge so the icing hangs over. And again, I haven't removed any frosting, but I'm just going to clean this as I go. And I'm just going to check my design again and see structurally what design and what texture I'm going for in what areas. So the hood of the truck, I'm going to need to build up with a little bit more frosting so I could make it a little bit rounder to give it more of a vintage look. And then we will be adding tire wells when we get to that stage. So I'm just going to give myself a preliminary smooth starting surface and then I'll start working on those details. And so I'm just using the scraper making sure the flat end is on the board and pulling towards me. Cleaning this, the scraper in between each pull. Okay, now that I have the preliminary icing smoothed in, I'm going to work on adding the details. So I do want the front end to be a bit rounder and vintage looking. Um, and so I also, when I iced around these portions, I pulled the scraper in a rounding motion to make it a bit rounder here, as well as on the sides here. So we'll need to put icing in the bag again. So I'm going to just pipe some frost. 
thing. So I can round up the hood a bit. I think going around here up a bit as well. Okay, let's start with that. to the edge. And also to the back edge. And cut in here like that. On an angle. And I'm going to bring this up and over. So let's move on to the hood. So I'm icing from both directions in towards the middle so that I end up with extra icing in the middle to help me with the shape. Now I'm just going to blend it in. Excuse me. I think what I'm going to do is remove the corners here and have the front be a little bit rounded. It's important to be flexible when you're doing a sculpted cake because you want to be able to make changes as you go to accommodate the look you're going for.
So now we're going to move on to fondanting the cake. Um, so what we're going to need for this is a rolling pin, whatever kind you like to use, an area to roll the fondant out onto. I have um, just a sill pack here or a silicone mat and your fondant. Um, let me weigh how much this is. I have the color corn flower blue and I'm using satin ice vanilla fondant. So this is about 1500 grams or uh, about three and a quarter pounds. I always want to make sure I have more fondant than less because you don't want to run out and not have a long enough piece. We also need some cornstarch, either in a shaker or you could put it in a little cheap cheesecloth pouch. Um, but you definitely want something so that it comes out pretty fine. I'm going to put some down on the silicone mat. And I'm going to just re-knead the fondant to make sure it's all come together. Okay, so once I've gone through and kneaded it a few times and I feel like it's nice and soft, just re cornstarch, seam side down, a little bit more cornstarch, not too much on the fondant. Um, so this seam is going to be down. And since the cake isn't round, it's the rectangular chuck, I'm going to keep the fondant in a more of a rectangular shape to make it easier when we come to cover it. So first I'm just going to flatten out the top, turn it, flatten a little bit more, and here I'm just going to check for any imperfections. I have a little air bubble here, I'm just going to pick at that. re-smooth that little bit and then once I'm happy with it I'm going to paste the good side down onto the mat and we're not going to flip it over again so this will be the side that's going to end up being displayed on the cake and now you just get to work rolling until it's very thin And instead of having to lift and move the fondant, I'm just going to move my mat. To transfer the fondant, you can either lift the mat and flip it over or you can roll it up with the rolling pin. I think that there's a lot more control when you do it this way. So I'm going to roll it and then hang it over the front and roll towards me, letting the fondant drape. I 
and this is the stage where you really want to work quickly, smoothing with your hand, doing the edges first because the edges are what's going to crack. I'm actually going to pull this crease into the, where the door is going to be since I can just cut that away and it's going to be covered. And inside the wheel wells will also be covered. remove the extra fondant that will just help I'm just going to smooth out um, all the spots that are good before I work on fixing this because I don't want the buttercream to get too soft when I'm worrying about spots that are not even going to be showing. Just tuck this in first. using the fondant smoother. Just gently pressing the fondant into the buttercream below. You're not going to see inside the wheel wells, but you still want to make sure the fondant is stuck to the buttercream on the top and the bottom of the C's that we piped on. If 
you get any ripping, just be very gentle in that area and pinch it back together. And I just want to take all the fondant that I had peeled away and knead it back up into a nice round ball. And I'm going to take half of it and reserve the other half. Just going to wash my hands. I don't know if I mentioned um, in my other clips, but it's a 80 degree, very humid October day here. Um, so the fondant's already getting sticky, so I'm not gonna use, need to use too much edible glue, but if I do need to use any, I'm gonna be using piping gel, clear, thinned out with a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna keep my reference picture close by so I don't forget any of the adorable details that I want to have on. So for the door, I'm just going to roll out this section. And it's getting very stormy here, that's why I keep looking out the window. <laughs> Supposed to be a really bad thunderstorm soon. Um, so, two options here. You can use parchment paper to make a stencil for yourself, um, or you could just wing it. I'm going to show you how I would do it, which is to wing it. So, I just want to get this to the thickness I would want the door, which is pretty thin. Alright, 
so let's see. Better to do it this way. Let's actually start um, with the back side so that it's like a practice side. So not using any glue, just draping the fondant so I can peel it away. And then with my X-Acto, going around to cut away the extra. And I leave myself a little bit more that I'll have to trim off, but once you remove the bulk of the extra, it's easier to control. Um, and so we want to go just around the wheel well here, so. And then I think I'm just gonna go straight down here. Okay, so now I'm going to examine it and see if I want to trim any more away or if I'm happy with the door. I can smooth out the edges. I'm going to trim this up a little more. Okay, so just to go over what I've done with the door, I finished trimming and then I used a silicone scraping tool to etch in the detail of the window and rolled out a rope of fondant and lined the door and added the door handle. So we're just going to do the same thing to the side now and then we'll move on. in white. I'm going to just keep it in the same blue so that when I add some silver luster dust I think it'll look a little bit more like glass having the blue underneath.
leave putting the ropes around the front and the back window until after I've added the silver so I don't accidentally paint them. I'm going to add all the details that I need to paint silver. Um, so it's going to be the front and the headlights as well as the tires and the hubcaps. And also I think, I think the mirrors should be silver too. They are in this picture. I'm not 100% sure about it. We'll see. We'll see when we get there.
paint palette here. And I'm going to start with the silver. I have a coin silver luster dust. And I'm going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon. And using an eyedropper, I'm just going to get some vodka in here. This just helps me control how much vodka I'm adding. Now I'm going to paint on the white first so that if any blue pulls off onto my paintbrush it won't layer and then transfer onto the white. And I'm going to check my luster dust for consistency. And I think I need to add a little more powder. And this is the consistency I'm looking for. It's loose, but still a little bit of a paste. And now I'll just paint that. As you're painting, if you notice it's a little thick in places, that's how you know you just want to thin it out a tiny bit more. So I painted the uh, details and the windows silver. I went ahead and also added the mirrors. They're just shaped fondant stuck on with toothpicks. And I added a little bit of red and white fondant for the tail lights. So now that we have all of these details taken care of, I think I'm going to start to put the pumpkins and other details around the truck and see how it all comes together. I do have a lot of the decorations pre-made just to save time on the final stages, but I will show you how I made the pumpkins. So you just want to make a circle with some orange fondant and place it down. 
and then using a piece of rope twine you just want to press making a cross and then repeating it in between so you'll get something like this and then using a ball tool or just the back of a paintbrush you press into the center and then a little bit of light brown and dark brown fondant twirled together and cut into little stems and you will get pumpkins. So what I did to give the illusion that the truck is full of pumpkins, I actually cut a bunch of them in half and made like little pumpkin tops. So we're going to line the truck with those first, leaving about a half inch to be the edge of the truck. I also have some birthday signs which are going to be on the back of the truck as well. paintbrush to knock off any extra cornstarch on your decorations. So before I move on to decorating the board, I'll just show you how I made the wood. So using a light color brown and a small amount of dark brown. First roll out your light brown just to get a clean surface. And then roll the dark brown into a strand. And just put it on the light brown. So you should have something that looks like this. If you're doing um, 
a lot of decorations, you would just do a larger amount. And then you want to roll this up like this. And just press it so it's stuck together. And then cut it into coins. So you have like a little cinnamon roll. And then you're going to Press the cinnamon rolls together so you have something like this. And just pick whichever side you look best. I like this side has the more, more grains. So I'm going to roll that out. Making sure it's stuck together. And I'm going to fold it again. again and so you keep doing that creating a wood grain and the more times that you fold it and roll it out the more you're just going to stretch these and get some more undertones I needed is just a piece of wood for this side of the truck and just to make it look a little bit more realistic I'm just going to use my knife and etch it a bit to get a little bit more of the wood texture And to write on my signs, I just use black edible marker. Um, so I think I'm going to add my son's name to the back of the truck here. Or maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Let's work on the decorating the board for now, and I'll think about that. All right. So just a little bit of frosting from building the cake. I'm going to smear that on the board around the truck in just a very thin layer. Okay, so here is the finished cake. I figured we would do a close up for this just to um, walk you through all the details again. So here is the bed of the truck with the pumpkins and the signs. And then what I added to the bottom, the darker brown is graham cracker crumbs mixed with cocoa powder. And the lighter is just um, plain graham cracker crumbs without any cocoa mixed in. And I just put those around the bottom of the truck. This hides any flaws that there might be in the trimming of the bottom ends. And what I wanted to do was add some rust to any flaws around the truck that I had, but as I put it on, 
I wasn't a fan of it, so I just wiped that off with vodka until it dissolved back to the original blue color. And I added some light silver streaks to the hood of the truck. That'll just, when the sun hits it, make the truck look a little bit more like it was painted. And again, here is the final product. Thanks for watching, guys.